All right, welcome back YouTube artists. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This is a short clip of a longer video where I show the full drawing from beginning to end. I have that one sped up just because it's, um, it took me quite a while to do this drawing. So uh, if you'd like to see that, go ahead and watch that one also. Um, that one I also have in the um, description. I have little markers where I show uh, different parts of the drawing. So if you're interested in just seeing the head, or just seeing the warrior drawn, like his face or something like that, go ahead and check that out because I have that conveniently marked, conveniently marked for you. Um, if you haven't done so, I also encourage you to subscribe. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos as time goes on. You're not going to want to miss any of these because I've been doing this for over 20 years. I've learned a lot. I've struggled a lot. And a lot of the things that I wish I had known when I started, I'm going to be sharing with you for free. Um, other videos out there by other artists, you'll, you'll pay um, hundreds of dollars sometimes just to get one video to watch them do one painting. I'm going to be posting a lot of paintings and sharing all my um, you know tips and uh, advice and secrets with you. So click that subscribe button below. I promise you that uh, these videos are going to help you to become a much better artist. And also leave your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you're struggling with, what you would like to learn, just questions you've always had. Don't be afraid if the questions, you know, they, they, they might sound um, kind of dumb for lack of a better term. I, I hate to use that term, but not that any questions are really dumb, but I know there's a lot of things that I didn't know when I first started and I didn't know certain terms and things like that. And, um, you know, eventually I did learn them, but I'd be more than happy to help you out so please comment below I will respond to your comments as soon as I can so with this drawing most of this was done in vine charcoal it was a medium vine charcoal I like this uh, charcoal because it's very easy to work with it's very easy to manipulate I will use compressed charcoal at times but the thing about compressed charcoal what I've learned is that it's a lot more permanent. It's um, more difficult to erase. It's more difficult to push around and to adjust the um, values. The vine charcoal is very forgiving and I could use a number of tools as you can see here in drawing this saddle um, that will help me to uh, soften edges and to adjust values. This is a 19th century saddle that would have been used by the Plains Indians and um, I'm focused on this one because I mainly do historical art. I know it's not a modern saddle, but there is a, a tremendous amount of difference between them. So hopefully in watching this video, it'll help you to better be able to draw um, any kind of saddle of your choosing. What I did to start this drawing is I had done it smaller in a sketchbook. I scanned it into Photoshop. I enlarged it in Photoshop to the size I needed it, printed it out, and then I used a, uh, a carbon transfer paper to transfer this, on this onto this 18 by 24 inch um, toned can, uh, tone paper. It's a toned tan paper made by, made by Canson. It's a really wonderful paper to work with. I like it for charcoal. So uh, check it out. Um, you might find that it works really well for you also. But I transferred this, the drawing in large onto this paper and basically just simple outlines you can see there. And some of them I actually had to erase with the back of this horse to make uh, proper um, anatomical uh, proportions and things like that. Uh, my small drawing, I realized it had some errors in it. So when I enlarged it, um, I erased some of those lines. I'm going to have to draw those back in on the back of the horse. If you want to see that done, go watch that other video that I told you about the full length video and just scroll to the end because with this entire drawing I basically worked from left to right I'm right handed and I wanted to make sure that I didn't um, you know get my hand into the uh, charcoal that I already laid down if I did have to go back into those areas I'd hook a cane onto the back 
of the um, board that I had this paper attached to and that kept my hand out of the charcoal. I know one of the complaints that a lot of people have with charcoal is that it's very messy and that is true it can be tremendously messy but the key is to just work if you're right-handed work from left to right and I do a finish as you go approach if you're left-handed obviously you're gonna to want to work uh, right to left so with the basic outlines in here I'm basically just filling it in and making judgments value judgments and things like that as I go along um, the thing with laying this charcoal down is it goes down a little bit rough and so I do have to smooth it down. I have several tools that I use to smooth it down. Um, I will use a um, badger hair brush. It's actually imitation badger hair. I guess it's illegal to um, get badgers and shave them or kill them or something like that because they're endangered species. But Rosemary and Company makes a wonderful um, imitation badger hair brush that I use for softening. I'll also use a blending stump um, and uh, I use a small sable brush. I think it's an imitation sable brush for uh, blending in smaller areas. Uh, sometimes I'll use my finger and sometimes I'll even use the charcoal itself. When you go back over it with another layer, uh, if you apply light pressure that can have a nice blending effect also. Uh, something I just picked up that I haven't, I didn't use in this video, but I found uh, it works pretty good is also a chamois cloth. They make little chamois cloths for artists. And um, I just started experimenting with that for charcoal, uh, thanks to another video I saw on YouTube. And um, that works pretty well also. I want to point out too that one of the nice things about um, this Canson paper and laying down the um, outline with when I transferred the drawing with the uh, carbon paper is those lines made by the carbon paper they don't really smudge they can be a little challenging to erase so you want to make sure that you're pretty confident with those lines I try not to put them down too hard or too specifically when I am transferring that drawing over because I have found that I need to make adjustments and if you push down really hard when you're using the transfer paper um, you might not be able to erase those lines um, one other tool though that I do use for erasing, I, my standard eraser is a kneaded eraser, but I also use an electric eraser. I don't use it very often, but I found that it's very useful for um, working in small details and things like that. You can actually sharpen the eraser in a way on a piece of sandpaper, and I'll be demonstrating that in an upcoming video. But um, I'll use that eraser to make really fine lines uh, also to get rid of uh, some of the lines that are more difficult to erase. The electric eraser is great for that. It's a little bit of an investment. I think they're like $20, $30. I got a decent one. They have cheaper ones, but um, I figure with something like that, I know I'm going to use it. I know I'm going to want it around for a long time, so I might as well just put the investment in and get a nice one right away. You can see that my style here is a little looser than some other artists. That's just the way I like to work. Um, some artists will work in a super tight fashion. That's not how I tend to work. I paint a little bit looser. If you haven't seen my paintings yet and you are an artist, or I'm sorry, a painter, um, an artist who works in paint, I encourage you to check those out. They are in oil but um, they'll also be good for acrylic and even for pastel and watercolor because some of the principles I talk about are fairly universal no matter what medium you're using. But I tend to work in a fairly loose style and that is reflected in my drawings. This is zoomed up pretty close. Like I said, this is an 18 by 24 inch drawing and um, you're pretty close up to this. When you back away, 
Um, it doesn't look this loose and this rough. It really tightens up and um, falls together. And that's the thing you want to remember when you are working on art. If you want to loosen up, one of the keys to doing that is to just step away and judge your painting or your drawing from further back. You'll find out if you do that that you don't need to be nearly as tight as you think. You can imply a lot of realism just with texture and um, of course with proper color and values if you just back away and look at it from a distance. Um, artists I really admire who did that, John Singer Sargent, he was a master at that. If you look at his paintings from a distance, it looks like you know somebody's standing right there. They're very realistic. And when you get up close, you see basically a bunch of um, abstract paint strokes. And to me, that's a very intriguing way to work because it makes the painting very interesting whether you're close or whether you're far further away. On this part, I'm putting in the uh, saddle blanket. And this is something where I have to just look at my reference material and kind of work it back in. Like I said, I had to erase what I had back there because it, the, the horse wasn't the right proportion in my small sketch. That's something too, when you make mistakes, um, realize it's not the end of the world. Just uh, try to correct them. When you are working on something, when it's a drawing, there's only so many things that can be wrong with it. Um, either your drawing is incorrect, and what I mean by drawing in that sense is your shapes or your proportions are incorrect. Something's too big, something's too small in relation to the other things that are around it, and or it's just the wrong shape. So you have to analyze that, figure that out. Um, the other thing that can go wrong with the drawing is uh, your, sh your values are incorrect. So just ask yourself, is it too light? Is it too dark? Um, a lot of beginning artists have a ten tendency to make their drawings too light. Um, and some of it is because they're working with pencil. One of the reasons why I like working with charcoal is you can get a lot more of a value range than you can with the pencil. And you don't get that shiny look if you are trying to go dark. If you like deep darks, I highly suggest charcoal over pencil because it's going to give you those nice deep darks that you're looking for. But going back to values, that can be one of the other things that's incorrect. And um, then you have edges. Maybe your edges are too tight. Um, maybe they're uh, not tight enough in some areas. So when you do have a mistake, just take a deep breath, back up, look at it, maybe put it away for a while, take it back out and ask yourself, okay, what is incorrect about this? Something is too big, something's too small, something's in the wrong spot. Um, if it's in the wrong spot, where do I have to move it to to make it in the right spot? Something's too dark, something's too light. It takes time to be able to answer these questions correctly. A lot of it's experience. But um, if you keep going, I promise you that you will get there. You can see because I'm using mostly vine charcoal, um, I'm kind of challenging myself with this. I, I do have charcoal pencils that I use that are a lot easier for fine detail, but I was just kind of intriguing myself to see how much detail I could get just with a stump of vine charcoal. It means I have to do a lot of reworking. It's a little bit tedious, but the thing I like about that is it also keeps me somewhat loose. Like I said, I like to work in a more loose manner, and um, if I went straight to a charcoal pencil, then you know, by just by nature, it's going to tighten up more. I also would like to tell you that uh, I have a blog called MySketchJournal.com, and in that blog, I'm going to be uh, focusing just on different drawing uh, tips and techniques. 
and a lot of different ideas, things that uh, aren't as easy to share in video. So go check that out. It's mysketchjournal.com and um, see some of the articles there. I think you're going to find some very uh, helpful tips for, uh, for your drawing and for your artistic development. And if you do like this video, I encourage you to give me a thumbs up below. And once again, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're interested in seeing, um, what you're struggling with. I'd be more than happy to help you. I love teaching. I've taught workshops uh, all around the country. And um, teaching is one of my passions. So please let me know what you're struggling with. Um, I'd be more than happy to uh, help you out and even make some videos if I see you know something that's fairly consistent that a lot of people are struggling with or if you just have a great idea on a future video you know I'd be happy to tackle it so let me know below so you can see here with this drawing I'm constantly going back and forth in different areas making adjustments I know it may seem a little bit tedious there is kind of a romantic notion that, you know, I used to have anyway, that you should be able to just go over it once or twice and you're done. And um, I used to carry that kind of thought into my work and almost like I didn't, you know, I didn't want to overwork it. But the longer I do art, the more I realize that, you know, making those adjustments and things, you, you have to do them. You have to make sure that your values are correct. If they're not, go back over them. Do they need to be darker? Do they need to be lighter? So on and so forth. Here I'm putting in the folds of the uh, saddle uh, blanket and um, these are a bit challenging because I want them to look somewhat natural. I don't want them to look too stiff, but they're fairly smooth. So these do require quite a bit of work as you're going to see. And there's the electric eraser. Just going over that, see I'm trying to get rid of that um, one line that's there. And see how that does a very nice job of eliminating that. That was from the carbon transfer paper. Like I said, those lines are a bit tough to get out. I do end up going over that line, but I did want to get most of it out so that it wouldn't show through the uh, layers that I'm putting over it. I'm also going to be posting another video showing how I did the grass um, in charcoal and how I use an electric eraser for that technique. Um, it's a really great technique to do. I use charcoal in kind of a sideways motion, but I will be detailing that. You can see it at, at a fast speed on the full length video, but in the um, detailed video, I'm gonna slow it down 
so that you get a better idea of it. I know some people like to see the fast videos, some people like to see the slow videos. Kind of trying to come up with a happy medium um, so that those who want to see the full, the whole thing sped up, they have that option. But those who want to get deep in the weeds and really see how it's done, then that's why I'm doing these uh, shorter length videos just on certain sections of the drawing. The thing with folds in fabric or any kind of clothing is that you want to treat them almost as if they had, there's four planes there. Um, you have the, uh, the flat parts of the fabric, fabric itself and then it angles up kind of in an upward direction and then you have the top part and then it angles back down to the flat part again, almost like a mountain with a flat top on it. That's how you want to simplify these things and think about them. And usually that top part is going to, that flat top part is usually going to catch the most light. Unless your lighting is coming from more of a side angle. Then one of the sides is going to catch the light. Now, of course, you, want to, you don't want to show it with, you know, with creases like that. It is a rounded thing in most cases. But that's kind of how you want to think about them when you're doing it. Best thing to do is do some fabric studies if you really want to get good at this. Um, you know, take a towel, take a shirt or something like that, and do some sketches from life. That's really how I learned how to do it. I know it's uh, in this day and age, you know, people want to just click on something and see immediately how to do it and get a quick solution. And, you know, that works if you're doing it more as a hobby, you totally get that. And um, you know, if you want to see that demonstrated, I can definitely uh, whip up a video on that. Uh, so just comment below. But if you really want to master it, if you're uh, really serious about your artwork, you're going to want to do studies from life as much as possible. I sketched and sketched and sketched every day from life for many, many years, and I still do it periodically. And I'm so glad I did that because that was a night and day difference for me developing as an artist. So if you're serious about becoming a master artist, a high level artist, um, and even if you're not, you know, try to sketch from life every day because if you decide you want to down the road, like, you know, I actually have an article on my blog about this. If you, you, know, you have a full time job, you have children, you're really busy, I totally get it. I'm a father of five myself. Um, and, you know, there's a time where I was working full time, I was going to school for graphic design, and um, I only had like a few minutes each day to do anything. And I use those few minutes, I would sketch. I would literally sketch sometimes only five minutes a day. I'd lay a cup down and I would just do a drawing of it in my sketchbook. For me, the goal was just get something in the sketchbook every day.